Paul, we talked about it before we went on air, deploying patients specifically with a podcast, right? I've done 204 episodes now of my podcast and it's, it's at first, yeah, it was tough getting off the ground. We weren't getting a lot of listens, weren't getting a lot of downloads. We personally had a lot of hype around it because we were devoting a lot of time and energy into it. And we thought it was going to be the best thing ever. And naturally that's not what happened, but through the whole lifespan of having that podcast, a lot of things came to fruition, such as relationships with the podcast guests, such as learning from people that's, that charge five figures for courses. And I'm getting it for free on my podcast episode and my audience gets the benefit as well. Plus, think of all the content that comes from creating that podcast. Every single video is an ad on Meta, and we're collecting people that are watching 50% of those podcast videos and then retargeting them with ads for our agency. So there's all these intangibles that you don't see right away in terms of the ROI from that podcast, but they come in other means. There's been so many conversations I've had with people that have become clients of my agency, and I only find out months after they become a client that they've been listening to our podcast, they've been reading our blog, following our emails. So they already knew me before I knew them. That's why it was such an easy sale to have. So there's all these intangibles that come along with it, aside from just the downloads. I preach so much. I feel like we've missed each other somewhere. We should have met before now, Jason, because so much of what you're saying is what I preach through LinkedIn and in my own sort of YouTube channel and podcasts and things. But it is, it can be disheartening when you, people don't realize there's a lot of hype around building a podcast because there's a lot of good things to come from it. But when you launch a podcast, and I've got a few clients right now who are going through this pain. If you're watching, we had Irina on last week's episode and she's just about to launch hers. She's gone through the same thing. She can't afford to outsource a lot of the production for it. She's realized how much work's involved in it. And that just keeps growing and keeps growing. So you've either got to find ways to use technology to your advantage. You've got to find ways to automate some things. You've got to find efficient workflows. And ultimately, you've got to pony up and just the book stops with you. If it's your podcast, you've got to get it done. But it's really nice for me to hear from somebody who's 204 episodes deep that still feels worth it at your end of things. And that kind of gives a lot of hope for a lot of people. If you were to, I was just going to say, sorry, Paul, I was just going to say like with doing 204 episodes, it becomes almost like it's a routine now. What do they say in the seventh habits of highly effective people? A habit is created after uh, 67 days or 67 weeks or whatever it is, right? I, I believe, sorry, it's the one thing I believe it's the book that talks about the 67, the rule 67. And, and I found that the, the podcast is just it's a weekly routine now. I, I block out my Wednesday afternoons to dedicate specifically to podcast content, churning out the content, conversing with my audio editor. All that is in that dedicated time slot that happens every single week and it's blocked out my calendar. Makes it easy. Yeah, I think the fact that a lot of the outcomes are intangible makes it really hard for a lot of people to get their head around because everybody, we're, we live in an age where Everybody wants short-term results. They want results now. They want the dopamine hit now. Pipeline is starting to go downwards and they're worried about revenue and how am I going to pay the bills at the end of the month? And if I do this podcast, man, I could be doing something else that might generate me some instant cash right now. And, and so they go away and try and do other things, but eventually they keep coming back to the things that are the long-term. The best time to plant an orchard was 20 years ago, guys. The second best time is right now. But you've got to have that vision. You've got to be able to take that step back and just not wait for the dopamine to come today. It's going to come in six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months even. It's a long game to play the podcast game. But it, exactly as you've said, Jason, I've met some fantastic people who are now very good friends through podcasting and live streams on LinkedIn. Our class is similar if you're doing a serialized version. I guess if you were going to go back and, and relaunch your podcast as a startup business now, what is the... What's the learning you took from 204 episodes that you wish you thought of at the beginning? Yeah, good, great question. Um, and, you know, before I get into that, Paul, you know, I, the comment I just want to make is the fact that people are impatient or they don't see the immediate ROI makes total sense. This is why, what, 90% of businesses fail? A crazy statistic is because people just don't have the patience to, to push through the hard times. And that's like a podcast is essentially a little business within your business right? It really is. You got to look at it like that, right? 
not necessarily as it can be a compliment, but not the driver of your business necessarily. Majority of podcasts are not going to be the driver for your business, right? It's understanding that and almost having it as a business within the business and deploying patience on that like you would any sort of investment or endeavor, right? 